On the 16th day of October, Halloween gave to me 16 cursed VHS tapes, 15 spectral snapshots, 14 mothers murdering, 13 prices bleeding, 12 models dying, 11 Bettys baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 Goldwyn shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 aliens spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a mass talk being creepy. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the 31 Days of Halloween. We are now officially more than halfway done uh, with this season, which is bittersweet. It's nice uh, to, to get closer and closer to the big day, to Halloween. Also a little bit of a bummer that we are almost to Halloween, right? Like, it, it takes so long to get here every year, and then it, it goes so quickly. Uh, so, look, I'm having a blast. We have done... Blumhouse movies, we've done classic horror, we are now in the midst of uh, a, a series of films that are all uh, of Asian origin, and um, this is going to be one of those that falls into the category of movies, of uh, things that I have seen a bunch, but boy, you just can't see it enough, quite frankly. And of course I'm talking about Hideo Nakata's uh, Ringu. The, the movie that started it all, the, the movie that launched a thousand remakes. Um, <laughs> so Ringu is uh, not just a terrific movie. Uh, it came out in 98. It was one of, you know, the first of that wave of Japanese horror films that made everyone kind of take notice of what was happening in Japan. There was definitely a mood uh, in Japan, sort of like with the French New Wave, all of a sudden there were four or five movies that were like, hey, there's something going on in Japan uh, right now, uh, like there there was with uh, France during that New Wave period. And, you know, you had uh, this, an audition, and, you know, you, you started to hear um, more talk about uh, Takashi Miike and, uh, you know, people like Hideo Nakata and um, Kurosawa and yeah, Kiyoshi, uh, Kurosawa, not, uh, the other Kurosawa. Um, but it, just a, a number of directors that were really doing interesting work and, uh, and boy, you can just lose yourself in Mike alone. Uh, there, there's a, a literal ton of movies. I mean, I've made the joke before. But I think that guy has some sort of weird deal with the devil where if he is not directing a movie at any given time, then he, you know, is going to be dragged to hell uh, all Sam Raimi-like. But Ringu is uh, is kind of interesting um, in that it it is sort of held up as a representative of that m mode of Japanese films that reflected an anxiety about technology. And we talked about Shudder, uh, even though it's not Japanese, but Shudder is, you know, uh, adjacent to that. It, it is certainly a movie that um, acknowledges that there is a role that technology plays in the ghostly. But Rigu was all about, hey, there, there are evil forces out there and they can manipulate the technology of VHS tapes of, of VHS recording to uh, to spread a curse and obviously big spoilers if you've never seen Ringu or the American adaptation The Ring both of which are very good this is one of the the few uh, American adaptations that is you know on par if it, I don't know that it's better than the original but it's certainly um, in the ballpark. And so if you just don't want to watch a movie with subtitles, watch The American The Ring. But I'm going to spoil both because they both follow the same plot line. And if you've never seen either of those movies, you owe it to yourself. It's a great Halloween movie. I know that's a, a weird designation that we've been using uh, this season of like, does this make a good Halloween movie, a good, a good spooky Halloween era film? And it absolutely does. 
So uh, do yourself a favor and watch it if you haven't seen it and then come back and you can listen to this. So uh, if you are listening from here on, I assume that you either do not care if, if Ringu is spoiled for you or you have uh, already seen it, which uh, good for you. You should have. And so Ringu is the story of a single mom who is a reporter and she is uh, tracking down a story. Her, her niece, uh, I believe, is uh, her relationship to the girl who dies, but is, is tracking down this story that um, is sort of making the rounds, this urban legend that, hey, if you watch this weird videotape and it's got a bunch of crazy images, and then you get a phone call saying you're going to die in seven days. And sure enough, seven days later, you die. And so uh, this happens to uh, the reporter, Reiko. Uh, it happens to her niece. And so she goes after the story. And in so doing, she ends up working with her uh, ex boyfriend i don't is it her husband i can't recall if they were ever married but certainly the the father of her child um who is uh estranged from his son and you know reiko like a lot of this movie is about the breakdown of the nuclear family that reiko is mostly more concerned with her job than she is her son which results in her son watching this videotape and getting all cursed as well uh, after she finds and, and watches the videotape herself. Um, and it seems to have some kind of grim things to say about women returning to the workplace. Like, I don't know that it's a terribly progressive film. Uh, it seems to suggest that because she is so focused on her family and because this family exists outside the normal uh, roles of, of traditional family that they are suffering as a result of that. But, uh, further there, uh, th there is her search for what this tape is, where it came from. And that is one of the great horror mysteries in, uh, cinematic history of her discovering like, Oh, there was this, uh, there was this girl who, uh, her mother was a psychic and her mother was kind of publicly shamed at one point and the uh, the the girl Sadako uh, seemed to be able to kill people with her mind and as such was murdered uh, her own self because you know you can't have somebody with that kind of X-Man power roaming around and the big uh, like head fake of Ringu is that you think that the movie is about finding this girl who was wrongfully killed, uh, shoved down a well, which is why you have all this circular imagery and well imagery and that kind of thing. And, you know, her body is found and Reiko kind of cradles this corpse and the body is going to be, uh, rescued and her story will be told. Um, and yet even after all that is done, the, the big shocking moment of the movie is that the, you know, ex-husband or ex-lover, the father of the kid, uh, gets uh, a little bit of uh, a surprise when Sadako comes out of his television and, you know, scares him to death or whatever, uses her powers to kill him, to, to stop his heart, one presumes. And... There's a great moment where Reiko is like, oh shit, you know, Sadako is not done with us, but she didn't come after me and why not? And she has to kind of puzzle her way through that and she realizes, oh, what I did was I copied the videotape and gave it to him. So I spread the curse. So it's that devil's bargain of I can survive, I can save myself but I have to doom someone else to do it. And, you know, further that her kid is now so cursed. And so she makes the decision like, well, I'm going to have to copy this videotape on behalf of my child and get my parents to watch this and, and thereby, you know, save uh, the child. 
and and that's kind of how the movie ends you know the 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 movie is pretty lean in its storytelling like it you know it it shucks and jives and it moves around but at the end of the day it is really just a setup to do this this head fake of you think you know who if, if not who like perhaps Sadako is always considered responsible but in these kinds of movies traditionally once you you know find the body and satisfy the you know the ghost's uh needs then the ghost is at rest but in both this and the movie we looked at yesterday with with shutter you know we're in a situation where just because you buried the body the right way and you're telling the true story of what happened um doesn't mean you're free and clear um and and like i said this is kind of the you know early goings of japan's examination of itself with in relation to technology and how technology has uh has, has you know plays a part in the destruction of civilization um you know like the kid watching the the television and becoming cursed like he's just kind of plopped in front of the television to to babysit him and you can kind of argue that this is nakata making a comment about that uh you know it's something that you see all the time and it drives me crazy or it used to in particular the idea of you're raising your children by just putting them in front of a television or these days by opening up an app on the iPad and letting him watch, you know, cartoons on Netflix or, or videos on YouTube or whatever. And I used to be really critical of it and I still am. I'm, I'm still critical of that. I think that's, you know, uh, partly it's lazy parenting and, and partly it, I think it's somewhat destructive. I think there's plenty of studies shown that, you know, these kind of quick dopamine hits that these videos give kids and, uh, is, is generally harmful, uh, certainly does nothing for attention spans and, and the kind of thing that the kind of skills you need just to get by, you know, and it's something I see with my girlfriend's kids all the time is the, a, an utter lack of an ability to just sit still and be quiet for a stretch of time. And part of that is just the age they are. And part of it is the influence of, you know, TikTok and YouTube and these quick videos that are constantly changing and constantly providing stimulation. And I think in a lot of ways, Ringo is a, a little bit prescient about that stuff, that it's only gotten worse as time has gone on. And beyond all of that, Ringo is just creepy. It's a creepy movie. Sadako is a creepy character. And it, it gets a, a little bit of a bad rap for being the quintessential, you know, wet looking girl ghost with the white dress and long black hair. Even though we've talked, if you've ever listened to Hero Hero Go Show uh, back in the day, we talked there a bunch about how that is sort of shorthand for ghost in Japanese culture. That uh, in, in much the same way that in Western culture, like you throw a sheet over someone and cut a couple of eye holes and wave your arms around and say, boo, that's sort of shorthand for ghost. Uh, it's just sort of culturally identifiable as a ghost. And that's kind of what the white dress, long, dark hair, you know, obscuring the face, that is sort of cultural shorthand for ghost for Japan. And Ringu uh, certainly traffics in that, but it kind of amps it up like there's some really creepy shots of Sadako, especially as she's coming out of the television and, and coming after uh, Reiko's ex. And all of that stuff really works. Like it, it's an interesting movie because you can really dig into it. There's some thematic stuff that's really interesting to explore. You know, I, I've often said you can do a really good essay <laughs> about this movie. Uh, on a couple of different topics. And I think that makes it more interesting to me as a film. Um, and, and it's spooky, you know, like I said, it's a great Halloween movie. It's something that you can, uh, turn on and, and put out the lights and it's an eerie film. 
and ends in a place that leaves you feeling somewhat unsatisfied, not narratively, because it, it has an ending that, you know, satisfies the rules of narrative, but it's this idea of like, oh, this hasn't stopped. This is just going to go on and on. Like you cannot, uh, you can't quickly do away with, uh, with, with Sadako and her curse. And I think that's really eerie and effective as well. So yeah, if you've never seen Ringu, I, like I said, I hope I haven't ruined everything about it, but it's, you know, kind of essential horror viewing, I think. Um, and, and like I said, you can get away with watching the American version that Gore Verbinski did. It's, it's a really well done movie and, and has all of the main beats. You're not going to miss that much. And the sequels go into some weird science fiction places that I kind of recommend because of how weird they are. But, uh, you know, it, it, it veers away from being strictly horror, uh, the way that Ringu and the ring, uh, seem to both be horror. So, um, okay. So that's going to do it for today. You should, you should watch Ringo again. It's, it's terrific. Um, we've got, uh, another tomorrow, which is a movie that is going to continue our look at, at sort of technology run amok and, and is also one of my favorite ghost stories of all time. So, uh, we'll, we'll get into that. It's just a, a terrific film. Uh, some more bangers on the way. Uh, if you are listening to this on the Legion podcast, uh, podcast feed, I highly, uh, recommend that you jump over to the dark parade, uh, where we do shows every week, uh, except for October where you get a show every day. Um, the 31 days of October is kind of shared between, uh, the dark parade and Legion podcast feed. So if you're not subscribed to both, please subscribe to both. Also, uh, you can find this post on legionpodcasts.com and subscribe to all the social media channels there. Uh, I, I would uh, heartily entreat you to uh, click on the one for Discord. That is where you can find me more often than not. And, uh, and as you are listening to this episode, I will be uh, returning to, uh, to town, to civilization. So I'll be back in the mix, uh, starting this coming week and, and being able to talk more about these movies. And, uh, I, again, I love it when people share their opinions about the films and, uh, whether or not they're enjoying, uh, the series as a whole. So that is absolutely enough out of me for today. Have yourself a, a terrific October 16th. Uh, enjoy your Sunday. And uh, we'll be back to kick off a, a brand new week uh, starting Monday with the 17th of our 31 days of Halloween. Uh, so remember, keep it spooky out there and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.